One position, Brian, that I think is really interesting in the recruiting cycle, and and it's going to be very similar to what the defensive tackle uh, situation is because we just don't know, Mm -hmm. is going to be the linebacker position. And I think that there's more intrigue here because of the whiff at linebacker a couple of uh, recruiting classes ago. So not only are you potentially moving to a four linebacker uh, situation, so, you know, in a three, four, you know what I mean? So you're rover. talking about like a three three five with a rover being the fourth. Okay, it, it, that's exactly what I mean. Thank you. Okay. Um, so not only are you lo- moving to a defense that could potentially need more linebackers, but you don't have a whole lot on the on the roster right now mm. because of defections, because of graduations, um, and guys so not panning out. It, it, guys not panning out exactly. So where do you see this group going in the 22 class, and how many do you think they need to bring in? So for me, I view Notre Dame as a three linebacker team. Okay. I, I think moving forward, Marcus Freeman wants that rover to be a safety. Okay. That's what I think he eventually wants. To your point, because I mean, I think it's it's you know again we talk about what is he going to do now compared to what he's going to recruit to do, and that, that's not always the same, especially with smart coaches. That's not always going to be the same thing. So for me, I think you need at least three, and if the right four want to come, you take them. And, and here's why: you talked about you struck out in the 2019. 2019 like with class. with 2020 class excuse me completely whiffed right. in the two 2020 two class. cycles ago didn't yeah. sign a single linebacker nor did you sign a single safety yeah. so it's not like you signed some big bodied safety that you're going to convert to linebacker right you struck out at both those are two very important positions in the marcus freeman defense so agreed you need at least three and if you can get the right four i'd bring in four and, and the right four means either a big linebacker that could maybe grow into a end, drop end Mm-hmm. or a a guy that's kind of more of a hybrid safety rover type of guy. Right. You know, a, a Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa type of athlete. But three to me is the ideal target number, and I love what Marcus Freeman has been doing. It. Look, before I do that, we also have to remember that uh, Kehanu Kia, who Notre, who's the second linebacker Notre Dame signed in 2021, yeah, big could potentially go on a Mormon mission, which means he's basically going to be a 2023 recruit. Correct. And as we've seen, that doesn't always guarantee that when they come off the mission that they still go to the school that they signed with. So if he does the mission, then you can't count him. And I think he's more of a developmental player anyway. So your numbers at linebacker are a mess. So you need to not only land numbers – you need to land impact numbers. You need to land guys that can play in their first couple of years. You can't land a project guy that you're hoping by yeah. his third year pans out. That just you can't do that in this class. You need guys that can play by their second year at the latest. And so that ups the ante. Now there's some good things working in Notre Dame's favor. Number one, they already have a commitment at linebacker. That's Nolan Ziegler, who right. in in my opinion, Vince, is one of the most underrated players in the country. I don't know how much of his film you've watched. I know you've watched a little bit, but you're talking about a 6'3", 6'4", 205-pound kid that plays wide receiver and basically safety in high school. They moved him a little closer to the line of scrimmage as a junior. This kid is, uh, to me, a more athletic version of Drew Tranquil with two more inches coming out of high school, two more inches of height and length coming out of high school. Um, That's saying a lot, which means he could maybe play Rover, but I think he eventually kind of grows inside, but I think he's going to be a guy that you can move around and do a lot of different things with. So it's a really good place to start. I really like Nolan Ziegler, three-star recruit, doesn't get a lot of love in the recruiting rankings. But as you know, Vince, when the tape tells me one thing, I, I, the, the recruiting rankings go out the window for me. So that's a great place to start. Great foundation. Kind of like on offense where they've got a bunch of great foundation pieces. It's what they're going to do to build on. Right. Now, the other thing working in their favor is it's a really deep year at linebacker, like nationally, incredibly deep year. Like Notre Dame's thrown out like 15, 20 offers, and there's 15, 20 more they could throw out of guys that can play at the Notre Dame level, you know, from a talent standpoint. Sure. Yeah, right. And what I've liked about Marcus Freeman is he's come in and just he's going after the best of the best. I mean, we, we did a, a, a podcast and, or we did a video and an article at, at irishbreakdown.com. So if you're listening on a podcast, you, you might not have heard it, but find the article on, uh, on irishbreakdown.com or go check out the YouTube video where I talk about Marcus Freeman's recruiting like he's in an elite program. And it was kind of tongue in cheek, you know, when you hear all this, 
excuses about how difficult it is and you can't get this kid and you can't get that kid. What I love about Marcus Freeman, he's like, I can get any kid on the phone I want because I'm a Notre Dame. Yep. And since he's been hired, he offered Harold Perkins, who's a five-star linebacker. He offered Sean Murphy, who's a five-star linebacker. He offered Jalen Sneed, who's a consensus top 100 back. He offered Junior Tuiala Maka, who's a consensus top 100 middle linebacker that reminds me of Manti Teo. Uh, two days after they offered him, he decommitted from USC. They offered Martrell Harris from Texas. I mean, they're going after the best of the best. And good. there's already some good linebackers on the board. Uh, Sebastian Cheeks from Illinois. I mean, that's a local kid. If you you that's the kind of kid you gotta get. You gotta get that in that Illinois kid. He likes Notre Dame a lot. If I had to project a leader for him right now, it would be Notre Dame. Um, you know, so Joshua Burnham, a kid from Michigan, you know, getting him out of the state's gonna be tough, but he he has interest in Notre Dame. That's another guy that you look at. So <clears throat> Devin Jackson's a linebacker that they're talking to from Nebraska, same high school as Xavier Watts. So uh Langston Patterson from Tennessee, another guy that's been on the board for a while. So it's a deep, deep board, Vince, and it's a talented and athletic and rangy board. And Marcus Freeman is going after the nation's best. And Good. you know, you get Sebastian Cheeks and you get you know, Junior Tui Alamaka, which if I had to predict today where those guys would go, I would pick Notre Dame. It's not a done deal. There's right. still a lot of work to be done. But if I had to pick today, that's I would project class. them. That's a heck of a linebacker <laughs> class. Those three guys, that would be one heck of a class. Yes, and and they fit well together. You know, Cheeks is more of a pure will. Junior is more of a pure Mike. And, Sna and uh, Ziegler can play Rover. He can play Will. Uh, so that'd be a heck of a class. And if you get those guys, I'd keep going. Keep recruiting Harold Perkins. Keep recruiting Sean Murphy. Keep recruiting, uh, you know, a lot of those guys. Jalen Sneed. Keep recruiting those guys. Get your fourth guy and load up. And and that's that's what I would do. And and Marcus Freeman has him in great position to have that great linebacker class. And you know, and and it's the kind of class that if you can get that class a year after getting Prince Colley, who was a linebacker rover in last year's 2021 class and my number one ranked defensive recruit in the class, a legit top 50 to 100 caliber player. You add this class, if you're able to load up with a good three or four this year, a year after getting Prince Kali, and then if Keanu Kia is there, now you've signed two mics in a row because I believe Keanu is a mic for me. Um, if he decides not to go on a mission is what I'm referring to. Now you've completely restocked your linebacker yep. depth chart. You've yep. got different types of players. You've got some bigger mics. You've got some rangier wheels. You've got some rover types. It's a very balanced class from a who fits together. Uh, it's a very athletic class, group of guys. And it's the kind of two-year haul that can, can completely get your fortunes at the position back on track to where now in 2023, you're looking for two guys and you're looking for the best of the best. Yep. It's like if you're not better than the dudes we got last year, then – we're good. Thank you. And so that's also what makes it really important for them to, to hit a home run, a linebacker, because that kind of home run class gets you in position to where you can then go focus on the best moving forward because you don't have to worry about numbers as much anymore. 